Okay, welcome to our penultimate, really, content video uh, for our GCSE Geography Revision Series that we've been producing. Uh, we're going to focus on uh, sustainable cities today. It's quite a small like, area of the overall settlement topic. It's always quite a favourite case study topic as well, in terms of like, a, a case study, an example of somewhere that uh, where attempts have been made to make the settlement more sustainable, what those methods are, what those ways are, and how sustainable they have been. So the idea of the sustainable city comes from the notion obviously that energy is lost and like energy is wasted within our cities as these two sort of uh, thermal images suggest you know where you've got the the red areas that is where you've got extreme heat loss there and the same on here obviously the white uh, areas of this um, thermal image show you how much heat is being lost um, within buildings in London, okay? So really, your smaller questions are likely to be about the idea of the carbon footprint, maybe a definition of a carbon footprint. So the idea, obviously, that a carbon footprint is um, the amount of sort of energy used by a person, the amount of CO2 that a person releases, the amount of carbon um, like emissions that their lifestyle has, okay? So a definition of a carbon footprint would be the amount of CO2 that a person gives off as part of their lifestyle, you know, through heating their home, through using electrical devices, through driving their car, um, through buying food and so on and so forth, okay? Um, so, in terms of uh, the sort of theory behind it, it's the idea of, you might get, for example, uh, a four mark question, on methods that can be used to try and make uh, homes and other buildings more um, more sustainable, okay, and sort of try and reduce the carbon footprint, try and reduce the energy loss, and so on and so forth. So a nice selection that you've got is things like insulation, insulation in your loft, insulation in your cavity walls, so between your outside wall and your inside wall. That obviously stops heat escaping, which means the house stays warmer for longer, so therefore less heating has to be used, you can turn your central heating off after a shorter amount of time, okay? Motion sensitive lighting obviously comes on when you enter a room and goes off when you leave the room, so you don't forget to turn your light switches off, uses electricity, or uses less electricity I should say, and therefore the house uses less electricity overall, it needs to generate, um, uses less power from the national grid. And the same is true with all of these really, the solar panels obviously generate electricity, the triple glazed windows um, obviously again reduce heat loss but if they're south facing that means they will absorb a large amount of heat from the sun through the day. So that's particularly useful in the summer months when obviously the days are lighter for longer and therefore they can continue to, to get heat from the sun for longer through the day. Made from sustainable materials, you know, if it's made from forests, it's like forests where if a tree is cut down, three more are planted in between, or the, the cutting down of trees is done in a sustainable way so that only the very minimal amount of wood is actually used, okay? Devices with no standby function, so you have to switch them off, you can't leave a device on standby. And then biomass boilers for heating, basically, you know, using sort of uh, waste wood and waste vegetation, uh, waste farm produce, for example, rather than uh, oil or more commonly gas, okay? So again, moving away from fossil fuels to using something more environmentally friendly and something that's sort of more, not widely available, but is there, but is currently going to waste. So four mark questions might ask you about, you know, two methods which can be used to make a house more energy efficient, okay? Um, I haven't seen one before, but you never know. The biggie of uh, sustainable uh, settlements is, of course, your case study um, and the idea of uh, the Greenwich Millennium Village. So obviously what makes the Greenwich Millennium Village sustainable? Well, first of all, it's on a brownfield site, okay? It's built on the site of old Dockland area, uh, or an old Dockland area, I should say. Um, it's just along from the O2 Arena, as you can see in the, the diagram. Remember, you've got a copy of this in your case study booklet. Okay, so it's a brownfield land, so therefore land has been recycled, it's been regenerated. That makes it sustainable because it means no new land is being used. Um, home use use 80% less energy, 30% less water. Um, using a combined heating system uh, that basically heats the house and powers the house so therefore you are sort of generating gas and electricity together if that makes sense. The buildings use wood from sustainable sources, e.g. wood is made from cedar wood, uh, from sustainable forest, aluminium is being used as it lasts longer. So basically it's obviously these are your methods that are used. So you can quote maybe three or four of these ideas from your list here. Um, 
You know, buildings are designed to take advantage of the sunlight and to protect it from the cold, cold east winds because of how they have been uh, placed as they've been built. Okay, so they are your methods for what makes it sustainable. Um, why is it not sustainable? Or if you're talking about how successful uh, an attempt is it at a sustainable settlement, it's not completely successful because people still need to leave the area to go to work. So they're still using cars, they're still using public transport, for example, therefore they're still contributing to CO2 emissions being released into the atmosphere. Yes, there is an eco Sainsbury's, an eco Sainsbury's store that uses 50% less energy, but the goods still have to be bought into that shop using conventional methods of transport. So again, you've still got CO2 being released into the atmosphere. Okay? So overall, the idea of a sustainable living is making sure that the carbon footprint is not so huge that there's environmental damage, that we use resources, that we use up all our fossil fuels and so on and so forth in a shorter amount of time. So be aware from that previous slide of methods that can be used to make homes more energy efficient. And then obviously know your case study, your sustainable city case study, an area that has been redeveloped or and is an example of a sustainable redevelopment. Okay, What makes it sustainable and in terms of how successful, obviously you've got these four points here. Um, that tell you that it's not completely uh, successful. Okay, so that is uh, sustainable city living. Great.